And uh, a lot of the um, matatis that I'm that I find, you know, I probably should have left because really they don't show very much. You know, you can, you know, here's one from out of the desert. It's got a little bit of a dish in it and pecking. And here's an old beater that had been just getting, pl you know, beat to death by plows and tractors and stuff. Now I never take any of this stuff here. Um, that is not in harm's way. Everything that I've ever collected came out of some place that it was going to be destroyed soon if I didn't pick it up and take it with me. Now here's uh, here's one of the stone bowls I was talking about on on the uh, R-rated pestle video. And uh, now here's another example of what an idiot I am. See this round rock right here? Well, there was about this much of it right here shining down in a creek that was just totally full of uh, every sort of cobble like that in the world. And I went walking by this thing and started, and I don't know, just something. You can see all the places here where there's um, been the, the, there's a, on this particular creek, the county sends weed abatement guys in there on these giant, giant John Deere tractors. And they've got uh, carrying discs beside them that are like, no kidding, are like three or four feet tall, all these giant disc blades. And they just disc the heck out of this creek every year. Otherwise, it grows up in little sapling trees and causes the, when, when we have uh, flash floods, it causes the sides of the uh, creek to uh, erode out and then it cuts in and digs into the farmer's fields. Many of them are, that are actually lower than than water level. Anyway, so I, I just got to, you know, this rock had just called to me, so I, I started digging it out, and I don't know if any of you guys have spent much time looking for bowls, but when you do, there's a mantra that you just develop, and this was probably the thousandth rock that I had turned over like that, and I was saying to myself, oh God, please let it be a bowl, please let it be a bowl, please let it be a bowl, and for the very first time, of course, this was all full of rocks when, when I, I mean full of dirt when I found it it was a bowl and it's a pretty cool and it's out of pink granite I don't know if that's coming through on this but that was pretty neat and basically the way they would use it here this is a broken pestle that would have been about probably two foot long if it wasn't broke but they just kind of went in a circular grounding motion grinding motion like that and uh, that's that's kind of how I ended up with all this stuff. I, I look in places that other people wouldn't. Now, here's another uh, of your railed matatis. And now here is just an absolute amazing example of a... Now, see how, see how big, big... this is We call this a, a, a loaf of bread mata mano. And um, I mean... You, can, you saw how big that was. I mean, you see how tall those rails are? It's just a half an inch lower than this big matati, big, big mano. And they just grind back and forth like that. And you get these. Now, here's the sad part of this thing. Like, like just about every cool, really cool artifact I've ever found, I found the vast majority of them because some farmer, rancher, somebody working on a big machine dug it up. Well, I was um, had permission to hunt on, on the guy's land that I found this on, and he was having some, he was running some um, uh, underground water or electrical, I don't know, but there were guys running a trencher down his land, and they pulled this thing, they, they, they knocked this thing up and didn't even look twice at it. It was just, you know, they were, you know, about every minute or two they were having to stop and dig out another big rock like this, but they hit this otherwise perfect railed matati and broke out that little chipped corner. I, I tried to find as many pieces as I could to put it back, but anyway, I, I snatched it. And um, now here's a class of artifact that I'll bet you, it, probably half the people listening to this have walked by one and never even knew what they were doing. And here's what it is. This, Believe it or not, is a mano, and it is now. You know, I'm six foot five, six foot 
five and that's my hand that's how big this thing is I don't know how big it is I think it's maybe slightly under 20 inches but I'm trying to get a look down at here there's the there's the grindy edge on it and the way you find these things here it's real slick I mean still smooth as glass right through here and the way you find these things here is you don't look for a matate you don't look for a, a mortar you look for a thing called a slick which is usually almost always on uh, a big type of granite boulder that is huge you got a nice flat spot on it and many times it'll have you know the little um, uh, bedrock mortars where they've just used a, mor a, a pestle and just gone down in the side of that rock and the, the where I found this one here the, the nearest rock to it was just pockmarked with those things there was probably two dozen holes and some of them I couldn't believe it at one point on it some of them had been drilled all the way through like a three and a half feet through that thing. Now, I have no idea how that worked or why it happened, but I I know that it was done by Indian human beings in prehistory, or at least pre-West Coast history. And what you do is you, you find a big, you look at um, the rocks and you get a feel for how, how much now I'm talking, you know, great big boulders, you know, the size of boxcars that you're able to kind of hop up on. Some of them, you know, are like a table, you know, only sticking out of the ground about three feet like this, like this thing here where I found this thing here was. And um, it's, uh, you, you, you get lichens, little lichens and little tiny pieces of moss and stuff that will stick to the sides of the rock and then you come to an area where there's no lichens at all to where it's it's all just absolutely just so slick that literally it's like glass and like the the lichens can't even get a little toehold on them and you find areas like that well those are areas where the indians were using giant long huge monster mata uh manos like this thing here and like that one over there and typically uh, typically if you find a big old slick like that look around in, in somewhere in within oh I don't know 100, 100 feet something like that there will be the matching piece to it right here that is stashed in some kind of a little you know nook and cranny underneath some rock that you just won't expect to find now on the on the subject of uh, digging digging up crazy things, okay, there was a horse trail. There was a valley out around my, okay, here's here's one of those kind of soap barry looking manos I, I was talking about. Uh, that's a little bigger, but um, there was, uh, there there's a valley out around here we call million million dollar valley because every house this is like 20 years ago and every house in that whole section of town is worth you know million dollars or more and of course that being where all the millionaires like to be now is where all the indians were way back then so there's a horse trail that i like to walk down and hunt arrowheads and beads on and one day when i was walking down here um you can see how much of this was sticking out of the ground, I think, just right here. There was this amount there showing in the middle of the horse trail. And I jumped down and started whacking around it with my rock hammer. And the guy I was with started calling me an idiot, like most of the guys that go hunting with me do fairly often. And I kept going, and, and, and he said, what do you think you're doing? And I got it, and I had it about, you know, a couple, three inches down on all sides. And I said, I don't know. This just kind of gave me a feeling like it was a bowl, but I guess it's not. And then, and then he said, what do you mean it's not? It sure looks like a darn bowl to me. How, how'd you possibly know that? So I went ahead and dug it on out. And it sure was, but it was, it's kind of had a unique story. You see all that uh, asphaltum around all the sides. It's, yeah, you can see that a little better. See that, see in the rim here, there's a little groove where they had attached a basket. And this, in the, you can see the black asphaltum where, 
Okay, there I'm recording again. And um, the uh, this evidently was, it took me a long time to figure this out, but the reason it's got a spaltum around over here is it had been broken and they just kind of super glued it back together with this spaltum. And the I had just pulled this thing out of the ground when the lady who kind of ran that uh, section of you know maintenance on the horse trail come up to me and said, "Just what the heck you think you're doing, you big dumb idiot!" And and I'm going, "Well, listen, ma'am, can can you not see that this here is is a serious, you know, interesting artifact?" And she said, "Well, okay." It's all right. You can you take that, but you fill that hole back in and you pack it real good. I don't want one, one of my horses, you know, breaking a leg or something, stepping in a hole you dug. So I promised her I wouldn't. I would quit digging. But as time went on, I thought more and more that you know I'll bet you just you know another inch or so underneath where I pulled this thing out, the rest of the doggone thing is sitting there. But I'd given her my word, and so I I never went back and dug it. I. That's kind of one of the things that I'll probably kick myself all my life. But now this here is a very interesting piece from the point of view of it shows it's it's obviously broken. This is one that the uh, the big disc down in the disc up the river got to before I did, and which is you know the case 99% of the time of those. But I mean just look at the degree. A thing the thing looks like it was machined for heaven's sakes. I mean, the, the edges on there are just unbelievable. This year is called, um, it, it is known as the flower pot style of portable mortar. And, oh, geez, I, I wished, I wish I could have found, I found so many. Well, me and, and the other guy that hunted that creek with me, he's, he's gone now. But he found close to a dozen great big old broken beauties like this. And some of them had still had the had a, had a groove around here and still had you know little beads and shells and things in inlaid in there with asphaltum they they filled it full of asphaltum and then stuck stuck beads and things on them and i mean some of them were just beautiful i mean there would have been masterpieces if you'd got to them you know a week before when the before the doggone tractor got them